On the command deck of the Emancipation, Adelie watches Clan Leader Aerith direct the battle against the Iron Hawks. The ship shudders as it takes fire from the Iron Hawk Dreadnought Winnower and a pair of cruisers. But the Clan Leader's focus does not waver as she snaps orders. Adelie has seen space battles before, but never at this scale, and the sheer magnitude of it makes her head ache. By the central display, where what seem like hundreds of indicator lights are blinking and moving, Aurelia Tarquin watches, hands gripping the console tightly, though Adelie is unsure if it is from fear or exhaustion. Adelie picks out a single indicator, the Gladius, darting around pursuing a pair of Iron Hawk fighters. Aurelia is watching it as well. One of the officers reports a break in the fighter screen. Aurelia sags and Adelie catches her. The older woman shrugs her off and stares at the screen. Lucius, what are you doing? Aurelia mutters. Adelie sees his indicator arcing after the Iron Hawk fighters who made it through the gap in the defense. He'll be all right, she says, though she isn't sure she believes it. Her attention is drawn away when a massive explosion rocks the ship and she has to scramble to stay on her feet. The Emancipation shudders. One of their ships collided with us, Commander Caspian calls. Three decks are venting to space, dispatching emergency crews. In the chaos, Adelie has lost sight of Lucia's tracker. She can't find it. She's helpless to aid the fight, alone on a massive ship, unable to fly a fighter out to assist. What can she do? You are not alone. A voice comes unbidden to her mind. We are always with you, comes another voice. Use, Use us. us, the voices say in unison, and Adelie closes her eyes, reaching for the well of power that lies deep within her. No, she is not helpless. Welcome back for episode 23 of Errant Adventures. As always, I'm your game master and solo player, Steve Morrison. On this week's episode, Lucius continues his battle with the Ironhawks, while Adelie struggles to use her Paragon abilities to help him out. Find out what happens on episode 23, Not Alone. On board the flagship of the Lodestar fleet, Adelie is observing this battle going on outside, and she feels this wellspring of power rising up inside of her, and she knows that she can help. And she is going to whisper to herself as she reaches in for a small iron totem that is sewn into the fabric of her tunic. She touches it and she swears to help the Lodestar fleet escape from the Iron Hawk ambush. And we are going to swear an iron vow for Adelie. We're going to do this plus heart, which is plus three for her. She does not have a connection with Lodestar, um, so it's just going to be straight up plus three. Six on the action die, a five and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So you are determined, but begin your quest with more questions than answers. Take plus one momentum and envision what to do to find the path forward. So her momentum, which I have reset since the last time I played Adelie to two, because it didn't seem fair to start out this session with ten momentum, which is what I was at. So I reset it to two. And we're going to start off with that plus one momentum for the weak hit on the Iron Vow. It's going to take her to three momentum. She uh, is in a little bit of a bad way for her health and spirit, which are at two and three. And her supply is at three. But hopefully being aboard this massive flagship is going to help her be a little bit safer 
uh, at least to start. So in order to figure out what she's going to do next, I think she's going to gather some information. She's going to gather that information by asking Warden and Query, those two voices that she heard in her head, what she can do to help both Lucius and the Lodestar fleet. So we're going to gather some information. This is going to be plus wits. And because she is consulting with the voices in her head, these AIs that are effectively haunting her, I'm going to take plus one for my haunted asset. So we're going to roll at plus three on this gather information. Got an eight on the action die and two eights on the challenge dice for a miss with a complication. So not starting off super great on this episode. Your investigation unearths a dire threat or reveals an unwelcome truth that undermines your quest. Pay the price. All right, let's go ahead and roll on our pay the price to see what is unwelcome. 82. You are stressed. Okay, so it is stressful. I think because of the chaos going on around the ship, Adelie is trying to focus on these voices in her head, which I think Warden is offering advice from a defensive standpoint, and Query is offering advice from a scientific research standpoint. Their ships are made up of this sort of material. If you could change the molecular structure, they would become inert. And these conflicting voices are talking in her head, and Adelie is struggling to focus on this stuff. And I think she is going to have to take a moment and breathe and is going to try and have to focus her mind to see if she can gather her wits about her for this. So this is actually going to be plus heart. So this is going to be facing danger with heart as this involves resolve, as she is resolving within herself that she can do this, she can overcome these things. So we're going to roll plus heart. Eight on the action die, a six and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So succeed, but at a troublesome cost, make a suffer move. I think it takes her time to do this. So she stills her mind, but she's going to lose a momentum as she is focused inward while all this chaos is going on around her. And I think while she's stilling her mind and stilling the voices and just very much focusing in on what she needs to do, Aurelia reaches out and touches her and says, Adelie, are you all right? And Adelie, having finally mastered those voices and the chaos that is roiling in her mind, opens her eyes and says, yes, yes, I'm, I'm fine. I want to help. I don't know how I can help, but I have these abilities. And she quickly explains to Aurelia what happened after she and Lucius left Rampart and went back to Adelie's homeworld. And she's like, I communed with these AIs and now they're part of me and they give me power, but I don't know how to use that power to help. And Aurelia is going to say, well, what is Aurelia going to say? Does Aurelia have any sort of information or knowledge, given her study of the Ascendancy, that might help in this instance? I'm going to say it is 50-50. I think the whole idea of paragons is rather abstract and esoteric, so I don't know that Aurelia necessarily has any direct connection to any paragons other than just studied knowledge. So I'm going to ask the Oracle 50, 50, 51 or greater. Yes, Aurelia has some sort of advice. 50 even. No, she does not. Just barely missed on the yes. So Aurelia says, I don't know how to help you. I don't know anything about paragons or I know a lot about artificial intelligence, but I don't understand what you're saying about how this is interacting with your abilities and Adelie says don't worry I'll I'll figure it out myself and she is going to 
step over to one of the consoles and uh, let's see, I think she's going to try and focus on the battle going on outside and she is going to attempt to extend her empathic abilities across the void of space to feel the intent of the commander of the Winnower to try and divine what sort of tactics they might be planning to use next. Now, Adelie doesn't know anything about Captain Simeon. Obviously, we know a little bit about Captain Simeon, but uh, she's going to try and read his emotions as she does this using the empath ability. They're not technically in her presence, so I may be taking a little bit of liberty with this, but I think the fact that she's been kind of juiced up by these ascendancy AIs gives her a little bit more power than the standard paragon. So we're going to go ahead and roll plus heart, which is plus three. Five on the action die, a three and a nine on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So on a weak hit, the visions are murky, take plus one momentum. So I think she calls out a couple of things to clan leader Aerith. And I think she's like, I can sense their captain. He is conflicted for some reason. It seems as though he is not ordering his ships to fire as effectively as they could. I'm not really sure what that means, though. Is it some sort of trap? And she is going to pass some of that information off to clan leader Aerith. As she is doing that, I think Aurelia says, there's Lucius. And Adelie looks back at the screen that displays the ship's moving and Aurelia says what is he doing and they see his indicator interpose itself between these fighters and a civilian ship which we should give a name to so the starship is going to be called Fallen Light oh that's a that's a fitting fitting name for this starship Adelie and Aurelia watch in horror as Lucius gets hit by some of these oncoming ships. His Galchris fighter slides and crashes into the fallen light and escape pods start jettisoning out. And then the fallen light explodes and Adelie and Aurelia both gasp as they see the light knocks out the indicators around it. And that includes the two Ironhawk fighters that made it through, and also Lucius in the Gladius. And Adelie goes, no, no, it, it can't be. And she is going to attempt to reach out again with her empathic abilities to see if she can sense Lucius's life out there. Plus three on this. Five on the action die. And two ones on the challenge dice is a strong hit with a match. So we actually get an opportunity this time. So uh, in this case, it's going to be plus two momentum, which is going to take her up to five momentum. And she is going to get a glimpse, a helpful aspect of their inner self. Envision what you learn. Take plus two momentum and add plus one as you make moves to interact. So she is going to sense that he's alive. He's unconscious I think like he, he got knocked out in that explosion and she is going to say he's alive but he's helpless at the moment and Aurelia who has been semi-advising Nishana finally says that's it I can't take this anymore I'm taking the folly out and I'm gonna go get him and she turns and is going to head out Nishana, I think, barely has a moment to turn away to say, Aurelia, come back, please. And Aurelia ignores her, hurries out. Nishana is like turning towards Commander Caspian to tell him that Aurelia is not to be allowed off the ship when Adelie says, no, let her go. I'll make sure that she's all right. We have to help Lucius. And she's going to chase after Aurelia they're going to head down to the docking bay. Do they find Emmerich Ryder waiting by the folly 
when they arrive. I'm going to say it's 50-50 because although he is reluctant to continue fighting the Ironhawks, there are reasons in his history that he would want to, and he's not the type to just sit around while other people are fighting. So we're going to say 50-50. 77, yes. So he is standing by the Hadrian's Folly when Aurelia and Adelie arrive, and he is just kind of like leaning up against it and looking around as if waiting for them. And as they approach, he says, All right, I'll help with this one too. And Aurelia smiles a little bit, hobbling because she's still pretty severely wounded, and says, Good, I'll fly, you gun. And she turns to Adelie and says, And I'm sure you'll figure out what you can do as, as you can. And they board the Hadrian's Folly and launch into space. In the vastness of space, the Galchris fighter Gladius lists, and Lucius, blinking, comes to consciousness. He is floating amidst the wreckage of the Fallen Light, a civilian ship that he had some part in destroying, and he feels this wave of guilt wash over him as he sees the pieces of the ship floating out there. From his position, he can see the battle going on in the distance as the Emancipation and the other Lodestar battleships, which are really no match for the Ironhawk ships. I think the Emancipation is actually an Ironhawk ship. I think it's actually Nashana Aerith's ship that she captained, that she escaped from the Iron Hawks with. So that one at least can hold its own, but against a Dreadnought and several cruisers and all these fighters, the battle is not going well. Lucius is going to shake off the shock of the explosion. He takes a moment to look at the Gladius controls and see that though the ship is fairly damaged it is still functional and he is able to boot the power back up and the guns still work and he is ready to jump back into the battle but before that i want to know where high talon idabrin is is he out in his lux sloop hunting for lucius as this battle goes on and if so, is he drawing close? So we're going to ask the Oracle. I think it's likely that High Talon Idabren is actually physically present at this battle. In fact, I'm going to say it's almost certain. 68, definitely here. Has he homed in on Lucius yet? I'm going to say that's 50-50. 93, yes he has. So as Lucius is booting the ship back up, the sensors begin to register a Lux Sloop approaching. And Lucius is going to say, oh no, not this guy again. And then the calm chimes, and Lucius hears a voice say, Ah, Mr. Tarquin, so good to see you again. Are you ready to surrender now? It seems as though your ship is in grave need of repair. I would hate to see you fall in this battle before we have had our words. And Lucius is going to say, Hi Talon, I know why the Iron Hawks are here. I know what you're seeking. Please don't do this. You could cause the extinction of our people if you continue on this path. Please don't do this. The High Talon responds and says, <laughs> Why would you think that you know what I am doing out here, young man? Please, surrender. Or, if you wish to make things interesting, power your weapons, and we shall see who is the better pilot. Lucius, gritting his teeth, says, Well, I'm not going to surrender. And he is going to engage his drive and power up his weapons. And we are right back into the fray. 
So Lucius does not have the initiative here as we are continuing the same combat from last episode. He ended that last episode without the initiative. He's in a bad spot, and I think that is reflected here by the Iron Hawk Lux Sloop diving in at him, firing as it comes. Now, Lucius is going to try to do some fancy flying to get out of the way, so he is going to react under fire. And because he's an ace, he gets to add plus one on this. So we're going to do reacting under fire by maneuvering. And this is going to be plus three. Our poor Lucius's luck continues to run out as he gets a five on the action die and an eight and a ten on the challenge dice for a miss. He only has three momentum, so he can't do anything about this. So on a miss, he's going to pay the price. 16. You face the consequences of an earlier choice. Okay, Lucius chose to follow the Iron Hawk ships away from the main battle. And I think because of that, it is literally at this point just the Lux Sloop and the Gladius dancing around in this dogfight. And Lucius is unable to get a bead on the High Talon ship. Clearly, whoever was flying the ship last time they encountered each other is not the person who's flying right now because this is some intense flying and Lucius is trying to maneuver out of the way. I don't think he can, so he is going to go ahead and clash. If you got a hit on that, he would be able to maneuver a little bit better and be in a position where he could try to maneuver some more or change things up. But as it is, he's just going to have to clash straight up with these guys. So we're going to go ahead and roll another plus edge, which is plus two, and hope for a higher roll. Six on the action die, a one and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So we mark progress on this formidable battle. That's going to take us up to five out of ten progress. And we also remain in a bad spot. And we have to pay the price again. This is going to be 70. You waste resources. I'm going to go ahead and take a hit to my supply. Take it down to 3 to burn off some of those fuel reserves as he's trying to maneuver again into a better firing position. And he is going to, this time, try to change up the plan and is going to attempt to use some of the wreckage from the Ironhawk fighters and from the Fallen Light to cover his maneuvers, to basically create some sort of screen that is going to deflect the sensors of the Lux Sloop Glaive. So he is going to roll plus wits on this as he's attempting to use the wreckage's cover. Finally, all right, we've got a seven on the action die. We've got a five and a four on the challenge dice for a strong hit. You succeed and are in control, take plus one momentum. So his momentum is going to go up to four. And then he is going to attempt to maneuver into position to get a good strike out at the glaive as it is pursuing him into this wreckage. And so he's going to attempt to gain ground on this as he's maneuvering the vehicle against a foe. And he is going to roll plus edge, plus one for his ace ability. And he has a seven on the action die, a six and a nine on the challenge dice for a weak hit, which on gain ground means that I can choose one. I can either mark progress, I can take plus two momentum, or I can add plus one to my next move. I'm gonna choose to take plus one to my next move, which is gonna be this strike, as Lucius brings the Gladius up from inside of this wreckage, lines up his shot, he's gonna roll plus edge with his strike, and plus one for the gain ground that he just got is plus three on this strike. 
Oh, so close to a strong hit. So that's a six on the action die, a six and a three on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So he's going to mark progress twice, but is going to expose himself to danger. Progress goes up to seven out of ten, and Lucius is able to get a few good hits off on the Lux Sloop Glaive. And as he does so, I think... What puts him in a bad spot is the Lux Loop is very maneuverable. Maybe not as maneuverable as a Galchris, but Lucius, thinking he has this moment of triumph as he fires the shots into the aft of this ship, the Lux Loop takes the hits and then spins around in this impossibly fast turn and is going to come back at Lucius. Now, Lucius is going to clash just straight up because they are essentially nose to nose. He's going to roll plus edge. Seven on the action die, three and a nine on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So we're going to mark one more box of progress, which takes us up to eight. And we are going to pay the price as we continue to be in a bad spot. 66 on the pay the price. Your vehicle suffers damage. Okay, so I think that is going to take the Gladius down to zero on its integrity, and Lucius is going to attempt to withstand damage. So he is going to roll plus integrity, because he's at zero, and he doesn't get anything. So it's just straight up to the dice. This is not a good thing. Oh, yeah, that's bad. So, it is a 1 on the action die, a 2 and a 3 on the challenge dice for a miss. However, I'm going to burn my 4 momentum down to 2 to turn it into a strong hit so that I can either bypass the damage, and if your vehicle is not battered, take plus 1 integrity, which it is not battered. So, I'm going to do that instead of taking a momentum. So, he is going to take a few hits that are coming in from the glaive and the ship almost veers into a piece of wreckage that would surely at this point slice through the gladius's armor and potentially destroy the ship and lucius is able to maneuver away from that piece of wreckage and avoid it with that strong hit he is going to take control he has the initiative and I think the glaive retreats as it realizes that the Galchris fighter outmatches it. And High Talon Idebren, though bloodthirsty, is not dumb. And he is going to withdraw before his ship is destroyed. And Lucius is going to pursue the High Talon, perhaps reasoning that if he can destroy the High Talon's ship, that might actually stop the Iron Hawks from continuing their mission. As the Hadrian's Folly emerges into space, the battle is thickest around the Emancipation. The Winnower is not far off, obviously, relatively speaking, and their heavy cannons are firing intense barrages at the Emancipation, which the Emancipation is answering with barrages of its own. One of the Ironhawk cruisers is listing. Several of the other smaller Lodestar battleships are damaged, and there is just this intense pitched battle, as we can see that in the background, the civilian ships, other than the Fallen Light, have pulled to a safe distance and their E-drives are beginning to charge up. Adelie is going to make a quick scan of the area with the Hadrian's Follies scanners, and uh, she is going to attempt to see if there is a safe path to Lucius. This is plus wits, which is plus two. Three on the action die, five and an eight on the challenge dice, four a miss. 
So, no, there is not a clear path. So, I think they are looking at this scanner, and Aurelia is like, it is getting very, very tense out here as she is maneuvering the Hadrian's Folly around all of this destruction and chaos. And Adelie is like, I can't pick up Lucius's signal. There's too much interference out here. And then she pauses for a second and she says, a wing of Ironhawk fighters are on their way in our direction. And Aurelia is going to uh, attempt to lose them. So as she does that, Adelie is going to focus in on her Paragon powers. And she is going to attempt to move some of the debris that is out in space to basically create a barrier that the fighters are going to have to fly around to give Aurelia the opportunity to lose them with the ship. So she's going to roll uh, with her kinetic powers. I think that is, if we're looking at our face danger, this is going to be again with resolve. So this is going to be plus heart as she is focusing her power and we'll see what happens. Seven on the action die, a one and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So when you are in a risky position, draw on your powers to make a move, add plus two and lose momentum minus one. So even with that, that would get her to a nine, which doesn't counteract the ten. So it's still a weak hit and her momentum goes down to four. So she succeeds, but at a troublesome cost. And I think this time the cost is spirit. Like she is suffering physically. Her will is grating away as she is focused on moving this stuff around. As Aurelia is able to maneuver the Hadrian's Folly away from this wing of Ironhawk fighters, Adelie says, there's the Gladius. I see it now. And she points at the scanner as uh, they see this Lux Loop that is flying towards the Winnower, and the Gladius is in pursuit. And Adelie says, oh, Lucius is okay. Thank the fates. And Aurelia says, What is he doing? That's High Talon Idebrin's ship. I'm certain of it. And he's going after it. And so are we. Hang on. And she is going to push the Hadrian's Folly forward. They're winding their way through this battle. And Adelie is going to attempt to reach out with her empathic abilities to divine what the High Talon's next moves are. Because I think she's going to try and send that information to Lucius if she can divine what his plans are and maybe that will help Lucius out. So she is going to roll plus heart and she is going to find out what happens. Nine on the action die, a nine and a six on the challenge dice for another weak hit. So she takes plus one momentum but the visions are murky. And I think what that is, is she actually comes up against the mind of the seer. And the seer is another paragon who is protecting High Talon Idebrin's thoughts. And she senses this old crone defending the High Talon from her mental probing and she says he has a paragon as she realizes this the high talon is growing closer and closer to the winnower and the the battle is growing fiercer and fiercer around them let's ask the oracle right here i think it is 50 50 does the high talon idebrin make it to 
the Winnower before the Gladius and the Hadrian's Folly can catch up and engage him in combat. 50-50, so 51 or greater is a yes. It can make it to the Winnower. 57, it makes it to the Winnower. It flies in and uh, enters the docking bay. Now here is the additional question. Is Lucius so focused on this that he would try to get in after the High Talon? I think that's likely. This is gonna be 26 or greater. 46, yes. So he is going in after the High Talon, basically going to like land the Gladius aboard the docking bay of the Dreadnought Winnower. And Aurelia is definitely going after Lucius. And so the ships are flying in, and I think I'm going to make a quick roll for Lucius to see if he actually makes it since he's a little bit closer. And so that is just going to be a straight up face danger plus his edge for speed, mobility, and agility. He's going to take plus one because he's an ace. So can he make it into the docking bay before it closes? Six on the action die, a seven and a ten on the challenge dice for a miss. So you fail, pay the price. He does not make it to the docking bay. He is unable to reach the high talon Idabren. Now let's see what the price has to be paid. 78. You are harmed. I think this harm represents uh, strain on Lucius' uh, physical body as he is pushing the Gladius as hard as it can. And I think there's probably some sort of like effect as you draw closer to a large starship that if you don't slow down, it's something akin to like G-forces. And he is going to lose a health. He was at five, so he's going to go down to four. And he is like bleeding a little bit from the nose. And he has to pull up and pull away from the winnower. Now, he has eight ticks on his track to cover the Lodestar fleet retreat. But Adelie has none on hers. So Lucius is going to attempt to end this fight. So we're going to go ahead and roll to take a decisive action. I think the decisive action here is Lucius pursuing the High Talon Idabrin and effectively taking that piece off the board. So we've got eight progress on our combat track. I've got a 6 and a 10 for a weak hit. Now, Lucius had the initiative, so on a weak hit, you achieve your objective and roll on the table below. Two. It's worse than you thought. You or an ally make a suffer move at minus two. So I think that suffer is physical strain as he takes two more harm as he is pushing the ship faster and faster and he is a little bit overwhelmed by that. He's going to try and endure some harm here. It's going to be plus his health of two. Four with two tens is a miss with a complication. Come on, Lucius, get it together. So on a miss... It's worse than you thought. Either suffer minus one health or lose two momentum. So I'm going to take his momentum down to zero. And it is worse because it's a complication. And I think the complication here is that the Gladius gets hit with some uh, anti-ship weapons from the Dreadnought and he has to limp back to the Emancipation. While he's doing that, Adelie and Aurelia 
and Emmerich on the guns realize that Lucius is in a bit of trouble. And so Aurelia is flying the ship to try and cover his retreat. And Adelie is going to go ahead and attempt to assist on this by uh, attempting to gain leverage. So she's essentially going to use her Paragon abilities to attempt to make things easier for Aurelia. Nine on the action die, a nine and an eight on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So another success, but at a troublesome cost. Make a suffer move. So she is going to lose a momentum. And as she is focused on guiding ships away, like just very subtly influencing the pilots around them, to guide their weapons just barely off the mark as they are retreating to the Emancipation. Adelie is going to again focus on trying to figure out how to affect the Ironhawk ships more directly. So she is once again going to tap into her haunted ability to ask for advice, specifically from Query. She knows how to use her Paragon ability to manipulate the molecular structure of uh, a material, but she wants to know how she can amplify that ability so that she can do it on the ship's hull itself. So she's gonna roll plus wits, and she's going to take plus one as she is asking for their insight. Finally. All right, so we've got a nine on the action die. We've got a five and a six on the challenge dice for a strong hit. So uh, she can add plus one to her next move, which is going to be kinetic. She is going to attempt to reach out and begin to warp the metal, the iron that is built into the dreadnought to try and keep it from continuing this battle to dissuade them from pursuing the Lodestar fleet any further. And I'm going to mark one progress for that discovery. And now she's going to roll plus her heart as she reaches out with her resolve to force the metal to bend to her will. She gets plus two because of her kinetic ability, plus one because of her bonus from the Haunted, so she's rolling this at plus six. Oh my goodness. Seven on the action die, a five and a ten on the challenge dice for a weak hit. So she loses a momentum, which is going to take her down to three, and she is also, I think, going to be stressed out by that, so that's going to take her down to one. She is successful because of the weak hit, so I think that is going to be good for another mark of progress as they return to the Emancipation. I think the weak hit here is that instead of it affecting the Dreadnought, the Seer now knows that Adelie is out there and she is able to deflect that intention to one of the cruisers. So one of the cruisers begins to list a little bit as it takes this damage and Adelie very frustratedly curses as she realizes that her desire is not fulfilled. And so they return to the emancipation and land on the docking pad. As they land on the docking pad, Lucius removes his harness and emerges from the Gladius. He's got blood running down his nose, and he looks much the worse for wear. Aurelia and Adelie and Emmerich Ryder emerge from the Hadrian's Folly, which has landed behind him. 
and there are other Lodestar fighters that are quickly landing in the docking bay. Adelie and Aurelia come over to Lucius, and Aurelia says, Lucius, what were you thinking? What were you thinking pursuing the High Talon? And Lucius says, I thought if I could get him... That that would end the threat of the Ironhawks here in Veritas Sector. But he just, he barely got away. And Aurelia says, that was very foolish and dangerous. You could have gotten yourself killed. Lucius looks at her and then looks to Adelie, who is also looks pretty drawn out and tired. And says, well, I guess I knew that you would come and help me. And he tries to put a little bit of a positive spin on it. And Aurelia snarls a little bit and says, You shouldn't be so cheap with your life. I have to get back to the bridge. And she's going to turn and head back to the bridge. Lucius and Adelie are left looking at each other. And he says, Are you okay? And she says, I think so. The High Talon has a paragon. I don't know how powerful she is, but she was able to foil a number of my attempts to help you. It's okay, Adelie. I know you did your best. My best may not be enough anymore. And the ship begins to lurch a little bit, and then that very familiar feel of a ship jumping into E-Drive kicks in and the Emancipation escapes from the battle with Lodestar. Adelie, a few hours later, is looking out over the swirling miasm of the drift as they are hurtling through E-Drive. And she reaches up and touches the iron pendant sewn into the fabric of her tunic. And she says to herself, I have all this power welled up inside of me, and yet I wasn't able to help them. I wasn't able to use it. What's the point of having all of this if I can't use it to help the people around me? Query. Warden, what's the point? And she is going to forsake her vow because she was not able to help the Lodestar fleet escape from the Ironhawk ambush. Not as much as she wanted to. So we're going to clear the vow and then envision the impact of this failure and choose one or more as appropriate to the nature of the vow. You are demoralized or dispirited. A connection loses faith. You must abandon a path or resource, someone else pays the price, someone else takes advantage, or your reputation suffers. I think this is straight up stress. She is going to lose spirit, and that's going to take her spirit down to zero. And she is then going to have to endure some stress. So her spirit is zero, her heart is three, so fortunately for her, she gets to roll her heart. So we're going to roll this at plus three. Five on the action die, a four and a two on the challenge dice for a strong hit. So she can shake it off. If you are not shaken, take plus one spirit or embrace the darkness. Take plus one momentum. She's going to take that plus one spirit back up and she is going to hear the voice of Warden say, Adelie, no one is able to use all of their abilities on the first try. Even the greatest paragon must practice and use their abilities and must learn how to harness the power within them. And then Query says, Yeah, you don't have to worry about this, Adelie. Your friends made it out alive and everything went okay. You're getting stronger, and we're going to help you get even stronger. This thing that you're looking for, the World Seeder, 
it is going to take a paragon of incredible power to get through the shield that protects it. And you're that paragon, Adelie. You're the one who's going to open the way. You're the one who's going to lead them through. And Adelie taking these words of comfort from the AIs embedded in her psyche looks out on that swirling miasm, takes a deep breath, and says, I will open the way. Thanks for listening to Errant Adventures. And thanks so much to Sirenscape for the lovely ambient sounds and music throughout the episode. If you enjoyed the show, please tell anyone and everyone in your life about it. And if you haven't already, please rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app. It really does help others find me. If you want to interact with me, my handle on Instagram and Twitter is at Errant Solopod, or you can email me at Errant Solopod at gmail.com. I also post short fiction and campaign-related materials on my website, errantadventurespod.com. Thanks again for listening, and I'll see you next time.